I think on an artistic level, we had a sense that it was that it was it was important. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about Suzanne is that um, what, one of the things that makes her unique, not only her voice, which is completely individual. I mean, she could sing one note, and I know it's her mm -hmm. among a thousand female singers. But um, her writing and her the the erudition of her lyric writing is there's no there's no throwaways. Everything is beautifully poetic and evocative. And there's not many writers, even to this day, I think, that can write a lyric as good as, as, good as her. Um, and, and like I was saying before, um, once she started becoming successful, then like the floodgates opened for uh, all these singer-songwriters. You know, yes. Then there was Tracy Chapman and Sarah McLachlan and Sean Colvin. You know, it just went on and on, like all these successful ones. Um, and a lot of them still, you know, pay homage to Suzanne, who kind of was the, you know, the standard bearer at the time in 1985. What do you, what do you, what do you feel your role was in her band, or is in her in working with her? Your role? Well, I fortunately I have I'm I'm kind of a multi-skilled guy, because I'm a good communicator. I, um, I'm a, I'm a good idea person, and I can I can abstract. And Suzanne sometimes speaks in abstractions because she's not a she's not an educated musician. You know, she doesn't know music theory. She doesn't know things about names of things and time signatures and stuff like that. So, so she depended on me because I, I do have knowledge in, in those areas. She depended on me to impart mm -hmm. the ideas and try to you know, translate them and be the liaison to the rest of the band or the musicians or you know wherever we were that we need we had to talk to, you know to musicians and interface them with our performance whatever. I was the guy to do that. So um, I became. Um, the, the de facto band leader, MD, for, for many, many years.